The Real History Behind the Crown with Robert Lacey. The hugely popular Netflix drama The Crown dramatizes the personal and political challenges that faced Queen Elizabeth's reign in the mid-20th century and beyond. But how historically accurate is it? History Extra spoke to royal historian and historical advisor to the hit series Robert Lacey to separate fact from fiction. Season 1 of hit Netflix series The Crown dramatized the personal and political challenges that faced Queen Elizabeth's reign in the mid-20th century. Set across ten stylish episodes, the drama spanned from Elizabeth's marriage to Philip Mountbatten in 1947 and the last years of her father King George vs rule, to the final days of Winston Churchill's premiership and the growing tensions over the Suez Canal. Elsewhere, Many viewers were absorbed by Princess Margaret's divisive relationship with divorcee Peter Townsend, while in another episode, a great smog descended on London and led to catastrophe. But how much of the series is drawn from real events? Here, royal historian Robert Lacey takes us through the history that informed the crown, and previews the coming seasons of the award-winning drama. A We've had part of the answer in this autumn of 2017 exactly 100 years from the foundation of the House of Windsor as the news that Kate was pregnant was ranked up on the front pages of websites alongside news of nuclear tests in North Korea. And now Harry and Meghan have taken over the headlines. It's dodging the issue to blame the media for this, to suggest their priorities are commercial and misplaced. Why shouldn't they be commercial? Interest in the royal family reflects human interest it's human nature. When America elects a president if you look at the Kennedys or the Bushes or the Clintons, for example a royal family is created around that figure. If you re cynical, you can talk about the political machinery of this, but the political machines are only responding to a very basic human impulse. We want to see humanity at the heart of history and the British royal family has, with great skill, fulfilled this function over the years. A. I gained great inspiration this summer from reading Hilary Mantle's 2017 Wreath Lectures, in which the author considered, in part, the role of historical fiction in portraying the past. I am paraphrasing Mantle, but she pointed out that the past, the trillions of lives, loves and hates that real people actually lived out, and history, the relatively elite, written records and evidence that survive today, are two very different things. She argued that 95% of what we know about the past what ordinary people actually said to each other, what they felt in their hearts has vanished. What s left is just a few stones and clods of evidence that have been caught in the sieve, and that s what historians turn into a whole elaborate structure. History is actually our method of dealing with what we do not know about the past and she also pointed out the power of empathy and the imagination to capture past realities and bring them vividly to life. For instance, in his great play Maria Stuart, Friedrich Schiller depicts a dramatic 16th century encounter between Queen Elizabeth I and Mary, Queen of Scots. Gaetano Donizetti based his famous opera upon it and the play is regularly revived and the critics remark respectfully on how marvelously the drama captures the conflict between Elizabeth and the Mary. And it does. We understand the issues and the characters of the two women better thanks to Schiller and to Donizetti. But as all historians know, Mary Stuart and Elizabeth I never actually met. They wrote letters. They sent messages. But they never confronted each other face to face so that s the leap of imagination that dramatists make. It s also important to remember that the crown is not just based on events inside Buckingham Palace. It s equally based what was happening in Downing Street in those years and the seasons are actually based on political milestones, rather than the royal family. The first season ends in 1955 with the departure of Churchill. Season 2 explores 1955-64 the conservative and post-Suez years, while the third season, on which we re now working, covers 1964-76, the Harold Wilson years, with Dead Heath in the middle. A. There is a whole research team of 10 working full-time on the series so that every single episode can be based on solid history.
Peter Morgan, the writer of The Crown, takes his inspiration from that, then checks the scripts with people like me, as well as with the people who were actually involved in the real events the best sources of all. But yes, from time to time, Peter also pushes his imagination to outright invention what you could call dramatic license, or as I would prefer to put it, dramatic underlining. For instance, Venetia Scott, the character who is Churchill's favorite secretary in episode 4, the story of the Great Smog of December 1952, was invented, because there was no single real figure that could represent all of the things Peter wanted to show. Act of God, the story of the Great Smog covers the week or so in December 1952 when thick smog descended across London. It is estimated that 6,000 people died of breathing-related diseases in London that month more than were killed in any single month of bombing during the Blitz in the Second World War and the way that the Crown deals with that event dramatically is to have Venetia Scott die, which obviously never happened because she never existed. But her death under a bus symbolizes the jarring reality which shook Churchill out of his complacency and galvanized him to help campaign, alongside Clement Attlee on a cross-party basis, for the reforms that led to Britain's Clean Air Act of 1956. Some people might not realize that Britain was a pioneer in clean air legislation in the 1950s, and this was largely due to the Great Smog of 1952, and the consensus that emerged from it.